Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Napalm Dawn back for a video here on G4G Games for Gamers. Uh, before we get into the main topic of this video, um, no, in terms of Marvel Avengers Alliance, I do not have any updates on Beta 4, but I can tell you for a little while there was a contest to submit a fully fleshed out, fully fleshed out Spec Ops that was happening on Discord, I believe all of the entries have been submitted. However, I think they are extending the time it takes to make the decision as to which entry will win the ability to appear in Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux when it goes live. But um, if you have a fully fleshed out spec ops idea where you can write the dialogue and the plot and everything come to the marvel avengers alliance redux discord and see if you can still submit entries um i myself have submitted some over the years most have been rejected except one has actually been accepted and i can't talk about it because we don't reveal the ones that have been um accepted the rejected ones i may talk about in a future video so unfortunately do not ask me any marvel avengers alliance redux questions on this one especially stuff about goofy and beta 4 as it is not the topic of this video and i also do not have news at this time so today we're going to talk about activision blizzard we've got two pieces of news to talk about the first one was going to be this about Diablo 2 Resurrected, but now we have super big news that's breaking from earlier today, and we will talk about that second. So, um, my girlfriend Ori Calcon linked this to me. I was not aware of this until she did it, and that is the fact that Diablo 2 Resurrected will cease to work after your console has been offline for more than 30 days as it will have needed to connect the blizzard servers for a drm check that is a digital rights media check that they've got on that um you know drm or copy protection stuff like that is well known on steam games and and other games that you get on steam you often run into something called denuvo which is one of the worst anti piracy things out there because it can slow a lot of very good games down to an absolute shit crawl and mostly when people get denuvo for their games they'll say we will use denuvo until it's actually cracked and then we'll remove it so that is where these groups these cracking groups or whereas groups come in really handy because the sooner they crack them the sooner they get rid of denuvo and then the game isn't quite so shitty so um yeah let's talk about this so what this actually translates into and we don't know if it's for pcs but they are really talking about like playstations in this one is that if your console does not boot up or power up once in a 30-day period now this does not say that you have to play diablo once a month to keep it going it's that you have to get it online, the console itself, once in a 30-day period. Otherwise, Diablo 2 Resurrected won't work. So the Does It Play Twitter account says you cannot play Diablo 2 Resurrected after 30 days of being offline. One of the first console games to feature a check with DRM. It serves no real purpose and can be removed with hacks. Dark times. Um, the article does not mention what the hacks are. I haven't gone and looked at it as I would not be playing Diablo 2 Resurrected on a console. I have it on a PC. Oh, oh, this is big. Okay, new news here. We're going to get to that. We're going to have three things to talk about. Amazing. But if this is a trend, it's going to be very, very scary in the future. We can't always trust the companies and the servers that they run will be around forever. And not being able to play games that were made to be played offline in the future is a scary thought. Yes, that is true. Diablo 1 and 2 had Battle.net components, but they really stood out as standalone games. As a matter of fact, I 
little bit of history. When Diablo 1 was pretty new, I was in my off-campus apartment at college in between places. So I had a December graduation. I walked. I returned to my ancestral home um, up in New York and then was there for Christmas, the holiday break and everything. And I had already committed to moving to a southern town after the graduation and I had secured the apartment I was going to be in and everything. So I returned to my off-campus apartment after New Year's and, and Christmas and was going to pack up the rest of my stuff from there and hang out there, cut off the utilities and everything until I went to my new apartment to begin my adult life. The When I got there, my other roommate had accidentally taken care of some of the utilities, but not all of them. So I had power, but my TV and internet were out. Now, we didn't have broadband at the time, but the local internet company or no the phone was out that's what it was now i know what it was so yes the internet was out phone was disconnected and cable was disconnected but i had power so what i was left with doing was like watching movies on vcr tape and renting them and solo computer play well i played diablo during that time and it was a good thing to be able to play offline because like Grim Dawn on Steam, that's what they're really made for. You know, I'd say a good 80% was single player, 20% was battle net play. So yes, this is absolutely an offline game. This isn't like Call of Duty multiplayer. So the thought that your console has to check in to maintain your license to play what is predominantly an offline game and whether or not it is predominantly offline or online if your intent is to play it offline because it's a fully featured game offline you should be able to do that in an isolated scenario you absolutely should be able to continue playing your game in a vacuum my when i lose internet i go over to steam and i play grim dawn that's what I often do because it's very much an offline game. And the thought of, well, like, oh, you know, you're not going to be able to do that in the future with Grim Dawn because you haven't launched Steam once in a 30-day period. That's ridiculous. And it is a scary trend. These uh, PSU.com really brings a valid point that it's scary to have your console check in once a month just to maintain access to a game that doesn't have to live online it's not world of warcraft where there literally is no offline component it's a it's a complete bullshit thing and i hope the outrage for this is really strong and it's really screamed from the rafters not to do this now blizzard does have a track record of really listening to egregious missteps if you go back to late burning crusade early wrath of the lich king i think this occurred blizzard said for our forums you're going to need to have your real name visible on the forums as part of a new thing called real id and everybody went are you fucking kidding and blizzard said no we're not this should limit trolling right and everybody went no like, are you, you cannot be serious. This is a major problem. We don't want to reveal our names unless we want to. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. It'll be fine. It'll be good. It'll just reduce trolling. It'll have no negative side effects. And somebody went, oh, yeah? And they looked at the community manager, one of the, like, the forum community managers, and like, okay, this guy's name is Dave Dave. He lives at 100 Dave Way. His GPS coordinates are 36, 47, 47, 36. Um, he lives in an area where the mean house price is this. And like his kids are named Dave and his other kid is named Dave. They just destroyed that guy's life. Produced, not really. I mean, nothing happened, but they're like, they doxed a community manager in two days of this announcement and they revealed everything they could. And Blizzard went, oh, 
Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No real name in the real ID. Don't worry about it. It it reminded. Speaking of college, it actually reminded me of several times when it would start to snow and get icy at my college. And I'm like, nope, nope, we're not canceling classes. We're not delaying school. Go to class. It's not that bad. Go to class. Go on. And then uh, an actual teacher would slip up and go coxic down on the ice. And, um, okay, so uh, we're, we're, we're canceling classes. It's too dangerous out there. Very, very similar thing. It's not important until the important people get important things happening to them and then all of a sudden it's important so this is ridiculous as i was talking with ori kalkin last night or two nights ago when she brought this to my attention what if somebody's military and lives alone what if somebody doesn't have a significant other that they live with or a pet and they're like oh i'm getting deployed and i've got to go to afghanistan for a year and they come back and a game that they have purchased full price with their money doesn't even work because the guy wasn't around to dust off the PlayStation and get it booted up. This is real. This is a bad trend. It's maybe not the most impactful thing any, uh, at least now, because if people paid for this, they probably are playing it. But what about six months down the road? When the new hot thing trademark happens and they shelf or back burner Diablo 2 for a little bit. And then one day they decide, okay, I'm done with the new hot thing trademark. And they go back and they want to work on a brand new Paladin. And sorry, game doesn't work because you didn't boot up your PlayStation in a month. Because the new hot thing trademark was on the PC. Uh, Ridiculous. And... This is a terrible, terrible trendsetter here, and I think this is really uh, an egregious misstep on Activision Blizzard's part to have this kind of a DRM um, go out. Is it the worst DRM that we've ever seen where the game has to be online to be played even if it's an offline game? No, I think that is a little more intense. But there are circumstances where maybe you don't boot up a console that has Diablo 2 on it for 30 days for whatever reason. And, you know, you don't get to it. My girlfriend and I were house hunting. There is the extreme potential that one of the consoles doesn't get booted up in a month because it's getting packed up. Because it's the lesser of the two used consoles. And then it's in a box somewhere, and then it's over in the new place, but it doesn't have net yet, and it takes a week or two to get the move done and get everything set up, and then, you know, cable's got to come in and and get your service transferred over. Like, a month is feasible under a lot of circumstances. This is absolute bullshit. So, the second thing we need to talk about today is Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. Now, a lot of my gamer friends are like, Oh, Sony, Nintendo, watch out! That's that's neither here nor there for me. Um, I think that does put some pressure on Sony to look at what is going on with the quote-unquote Sony fanboys that think they have all the great exclusives like the From Software stuff and, you know, Spider-Man on Marvel's Avengers on the PlayStation and everything like that. The Spider-Man games, Horizon. But as we've seen, PS5 has allowed a lot of their former exclusives to show up on PC and Steam and everything. So, PS5 exclusivity is already waning But now that Xbox and Microsoft have merged and people have made the point like, what about a WoW subscription as part of a Game Pass? Um, That is going to be really interesting. Is this monopolistic? Um, No, if they if these if Activision Blizzard King, a.k.a. ABK, retain a lot of their identity along with Treyarch and Raven and, um, you know, a bunch of these others down here. It's it's not too bad. Um, I don't really particularly find it monopolistic, but 
getting onto the umbrella of Microsoft where we never really hear about discrimination or sexism or sexual assault or ageism or, you know, offensive language and company emails and everything like that. You just don't see negative press about Microsoft in that way, or at least technically Xbox under Microsoft. You don't really hear about it. And you look at this picture over here, one, two, three, four, five, six guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven females. That's pretty balanced, which Blizzard was not for many, many years. And now they have also acquired, of course, Bethesda, and there may be some rumors about Ubisoft, so we'll see. Uh, that would definitely get a little monopolistic if you add in Bethesda, ABK, and then Ubisoft at some point down the road, but we'll see. They expect to close the, the deal in the fiscal year 2023, which means we may not see it approved for up to 18 months. It's a long period of time, but Activision Blizzard operates in a number of markets, which could make it a bit more complicated. Um... I see this as a net win if this happens because Blizzard's PR, their public impression, their public representation um, is bad. People's thoughts on Blizzard overall, I would say, without actually running a poll or anything, is really not good right now. I think it is an all-time low. And I feel that that opinion comes very, very close to being an actual straight-up fact. It's probably at one of the lowest that it's ever been because it's been revealed that the Blizzard that we knew and loved so much from Diablo 1 and 2 and StarCraft 1 and 2, the first three Warcrafts and everything, we loved them on the outside, but on the inside it was rotten to the core. And it's not like everything that we've heard about Blizzard has occurred within the last five years. There was plenty of stuff occurring when it was Blizzard Blizzard, not just Blizzard Activision. So early Blizzard, Blizzard North, is still pretty immune to what we've seen. But And Overwatch, the, the people who did Overwatch within Blizzard, have largely been pretty good. Because Uncle Jeff, Tiggle Biddies, Jeff Kaplan has done a really good job of shielding his team from some of that bullshit. But to think of like the Wrath of the Lich King era Blizzard when they were probably at their heyday of storytelling and best expansion, to know that so much of this stuff was occurring in the background and the Cosby suite and a woman killing herself because she couldn't handle um, the sexism that she was dealing with and... Uh, the sexual assault that she had lived through I mean that that just makes you really feel something about Blizzard that you've never felt before and it's it's a pretty bad feeling it's, it's really awful so this is hopefully going to be a net win but let's come over here and take a look at what's going on here this would be exactly what I want this is the one thing that I wanted out of the merger and would make me really happy. Bobby Kotick, a.k.a. the Shit Weasel, a.k.a. Shitfuck, will leave Activision Blizzard once the Microsoft deal closes, confirms a new report. The news of Microsoft acquiring ABK is still being processed by gamers around the world, though for many it immediately sprang up a bevy of questions. One of the more pertinent is what will happen to Bobby the Shitfuck Weasel Kotick. Activision Blizzard has been under intense scrutiny for a while now and is widely known as a publisher with some of the industry's biggest problems. Phil Spencer has already weighed in on that. Other CEOs have provided their opinion on ABK in the last year or so. According to Jason Schreier, who is usually right on top of his stuff, Jason Schreier does not produce bad news or quote-unquote, fake news by any stretch. Bobby Kotick will continue to serve as the CEO of Activision Blizzard once the deal closes. Uh, wait, Bobby will continue once the deal closes. Not 100% clear whether or not Bobby will stay after the ink dries. Now clear via Dina Base reporting that Bobby Kotick will be gone. Okay, so it's two tweets at two different times. 
he said he was staying on and then an update happened and said that he's gone when it closes that's what we need um this is return of the jedi the death star blew up levels of yub nub dancing to see him go away and i'm talking not the new return of the jedi where it went to all the planets and had that cheesy music this is classic ewoks banging on the helmets of the stormtroopers yub nub dancing um I, I would put on an Ewok outfit right now and yub nub throughout this goddamn house to see Bobby Kotick go in this. And I've already had guild members tell me that this is what they need. And this is what would help restore um, some faith in Blizzard for them. So you're going to watch me put it out over here. So let's see... Some of the responses that, like, what we've joked about over here. So my friend Mojo linked it at about 8.45 this morning. And by the way, this memory came up on my Facebook the other day. Back in January 16th of 2015, um, they sent me the 10-year statue because I didn't let my sub lapse um, for not even a month in 10 years so they sent me the statue so this is the blizzard that we remember people who go out of their way to give us this pretty big statue that was heavy um simply for playing their game for 10 years so mojo links it at 8 45 i'm like oh what the fuck doomkin links it again about 10 minutes later and um yeah put tony hawk in halo Hopefully this is in a cir circling the wagons maneuver. Uh, as long as they get rid of Epstein's friend, ABK, a a.k.a. Bobby Kotick. Doomkin feels the same. Um, Tayton's thinking about what's going to happen with um, Diablo 4. Which is, yeah, that is a very valid question. Like, where, where is this going to leave Diablo 4's development? Will it be done before the merger or not? What about Overwatch 2? So, I I could not be happier. Because right now, it is, it's painful. Like, I play Overwatch daily. When I actually sit at my computer, the only thing that I feel like doing in terms of all my games is shooting somebody's head off in Overwatch. Um, or sending them up in the air through Junkrat. Because I'm a Junkrat main for the most part. But... When I think about WoW, because I still have an active sub, there are two very different emotions that go on over there. I'm playing in a bit of a ghost town, and I almost feel bad for doing it. I, I feel like I'm constantly petting the head of a sexual harasser, even though I'm, like, not supposed to. Like, when nobody's looking, I'm like, they're there, it's okay, you're a good person. And that's what it feels like to play WoW. And that's an awful feeling to sort of like feel grimy about logging into a game where I've run a guild since 2004. A guild that spawned up from running a clan of Unreal Tournament players. My nerve has been an entity since 2001 and we rolled right through the FPSs and then we rolled right into World of Warcraft. And the dynasty, I'm not even going to say is dying, it's dead. Like, we're not doing anything right now. And that's because of how bad Blizzard has been since the summer. Um, and you feel dirty and, and grungy when you go and play World of Warcraft now. Like, you've literally toured New Jersey. That's what it feels like, is that you've walked around new jersey and haven't had a shower in five days it's a terrible feeling for a game that i've loved and put so much into for so long but this happening it's it's yub nub it, it is the best yub nub that i've thought of when it comes to blizzard products and especially world of warcraft in about a half a year now so um, really happy to hear that he's on the way out and I couldn't really think of a way 
that Microsoft would want this guy to stay. If Phil is going to weigh in and say this guy's a shit fuck weasel and Blizzard are shit fuck weasels for keeping the shit fuck weasel on, I never thought he would truly make the transition over. And yeah, he needs to go. He needs to take his overpaid ass onto a yacht in international waters where he can't be prosecuted and live out his rest of the rest of his days over there like um that movie where the guy just lives in a plane the entire um oh shit it's like a space bridge movie where they build they build one and then somebody bombs it and they discover a clone had been built across the world and um is it to go into space or something like that? And the guy who builds in on the other side of the world is like a guy who constantly flies in a plane that like never touches down. That's what needs to happen to Bobby Cocktick. He needs to be on a boat that never comes ashore and somebody just catapults him t-shirts and bread whenever he needs it. Like fucking stale bread. Like somebody goes to the coast of Hawaii and catapults some stale bread to him out in international waters and it's like yeah enjoy your moldy stale bread you bastard anyway so yeah that's the activision blizzard news here so to sum up they have the shitty drm check that was um that was happening with blizzard uh with blizzard's diablo 2 um absolutely ludicrous requirement i i hope people scream their disappointment on this one to the high heavens so that Tyrael up there is like yes champion and comes down and smites Blizzard for even thinking about this and uh yeah thank god this merger is the thing that gets rid of Bobby Kotick um stunning to hear because uh, the board has been keeping Bobby on but the investors for Blizzard have said, hey, board members, if you continue to keep defending Bobby Kotick and leave him on the board, we will um, we will back people to replace you that don't do this because you have no idea what you have done to Blizzard's stock and income by continuing to defend the shitfuck weasel. And you're all terrible for it, and we will vote you out with our powers to do so if you continue to do that so now they don't have to worry about it the investors get what they wanted so yep clock is ticking for bobby kotick and i couldn't be happier so happy yub nub to everybody and i will see you in the next video